Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. Today we're going to have two special guests on with us, Carlos and Lisa. They're going to go through their life story, how they started, and where they're at now with their business. They are in the trucking industry, so stay tuned to see what they've got to share with us. We'll see you guys. So when you guys got to SIDS, so 10 years paying off debt and before you got your second truck, at what point did you guys start to see maybe a little bit more momentum? Was it at the second truck or was it not until getting that third and fourth and so on? I think it was getting, I want to say getting the third truck. Getting the third truck? Yeah, the, the second truck for me was still a little scary, but we were doing it. But it, then Carlos was like, okay, well, if we do two, we can do three. And I said, do you right. think so? You know, I, I was always that. I don't know. <laughs> you scared the cat. Yeah, I was, I was scared. <laughs> um, you know, like what again? What if the driver doesn't stay? You know what? He goes. We got another driver. Carlos always had an answer to every question I had, which made it easier for me. You know, I, I trusted in him, and he always figured it out. So I was the paperwork person, but he always figured out the problems. And um, so when we got that third one, that's when it hit me. We can do this. And right. that's when we both, you know, I mean, all along he was going, wanting to go more, but that's when I think I was like, we could actually do this. Yeah. You know, we can get more. And we started to ask at the company, Hey, can, can we get more? And, you know, and with the trust and the fact that Carlos worked so hard, he was there six days a week. They gave us the opportunities. If you can speak more on the things you had to do compared to I would say your competition to other drivers that weren't doing certain things. What things did you guys have to do or even uh, company sacrifices you had to make um, for the company to give you those extra opportunities, those contracts? I can name some, but I want to like I, because I've helped you guys, I know, get contracts, mm -hmm. but I want you guys to speak on so people can see, you know, in business, it's not just. Oh yeah, it's just as simple as just acquiring. Like you have to take different routes and prove yourself to be able to have growth. Being responsible and know what you want in life. You yeah, know? I think Carlos. Um, the being humble, the being humble, Kirby. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that too. Carlos yeah. is very. Always. Carlos is. <laughs> That's number one, right there. He, you know, our, our you kids change. Our kids who you talk are, you know, to us, right? About right. That. And our kids always say that the most humble person they know is their dad. Yeah, it really is. When your kids are saying that, that's great. They don't think I'm as humble. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. I, I am humble. I think the that's difference humble. that people take from me is that I'm proud of what we've yeah. done. And so right. when you're talking about it, my kids are like, you're not being humble. And I said, yes, I am. I am being humble, but I'm telling people how they can do this too you right. know and um i, I think in what, the question you asked um carlos was very responsible i was always there taking his dispatch making sure the guys you know did what they had to do on that level but it was also at sids i worked there so it was right. also proving to them that together we can i can still do my thing but help him run his and um you know, I hire shuttle guys, I hire their seconds. So I had to show them, I think more that it's not a conflict of interest. I can do both. Um, and as far as drivers, we have always treated our drivers as though they were part of our family. We did, we do events at our home. We, Carlos recently, I think last year it was, last year took all his drivers out um, for Christmas um took them to eat um we you know we give them bonuses and you know we're 1099s but we we do things like that um just to show them that we appreciate everything they do because if it wasn't for them we wouldn't be where we are i'm a, never a no girl i think every time you reach out hey lisa i'm yeah. like we got it you know <laughs> give, give me a second but we yeah. i know in my head we have it but i have to right. tell you give me a second Right, right. Um, and we we figure it out. Carlos and I will move things around, you know, do whatever we need to do. Um, because it's first of all, showing you guys that we're here for the company 
is what's going to help us progress within the company, but also right. help our business progress. You know, and to be honest, I do like what I'm doing. Yes, he and does. if I have to jump in the truck and finish the the job for the night for the day, I'll do it. She's a very humble person since I met her, and she always, no matter what decision I take, she's always there with me. That's yes. amazing. Yeah. That's yeah. amazing. Carlos has done some crazy things that I've had to be behind him on. <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta just do it, you know. Life, if you don't, if you don't play the lottery ticket, you're not gonna know if you're gonna you win. Can't win. You, you can't win. You just gotta yeah. go for it. Yeah, I can tell you some of our stuff, but we probably don't have all that time. <laughs> so, what's your end goal? So now you have nine trucks. What what's your goal to? What number are you trying to get to? I don't think we don't have a specific number. Um, but at SIDS right now, <laughs> Alex knows they won't allow us to bring in any more right now because, um, I guess it's the fear of if something happened, would Carlos take all his trucks and go somewhere else? Um, we right. we're in it to the end, um, because we really like what we do, but I think now we've discussed expanding other places and we have been working on that. Yeah, we've been working oh, on expanding amazing. with other companies, continuing what we do with SIDS, but also trying to expand other places. So we've been reaching out to other companies and seeing what we can do to expand. You know, that's good. That's keep great. going. Keep yeah, going. keep going. Keep going. That's it. You say you talk about Alex. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Alex <laughs> is the a Alex is the age of some of our children. So, right, right. Oh, we, you know, they every our kids know who Alex are and all the the, the managers at, at SIDS um, from us talking to them for the dispatch. But with Alex, we talk, Carlos and I always talking about Alex. We're like, wow, he's so young. He's doing good. And, mm -hmm. you know, I talk to him at work about the houses, you know, he's he's doing. He talks to me about investment, trying to get me to, you know, get into it. And I said, I don't understand it. And he's like, I'll help you. But um, I, I do want to say that I, I think Alex is amazing. I mean, the age that he mm -hmm. is and what he's doing to me, looking back to my age, I, my train of thought was nowhere near what Alex is doing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It, it's funny when I when I first met Alex. Uh, well, it's no. So actually, the first time and Alex don't even remember this. The first time I ever met him on the phone, I was in Afghanistan. And oh, wow. a, a friend of Alex called me, or I called him, and then Alex got on the phone. You were in Afghanistan. I was, like, I was in Afghanistan at the time. Oh wow. Oh okay. Yeah, I was yeah. in I was in Afghanistan, and then I talked to him, and I was like, I was like, I think he was like 17, 16 at yeah. the time, somewhere, somewhere <laughs> in that time. And I was like, all right, just keep saving your money, and uh, I'll talk to you when you get to eighteen. That's exactly what. I, that's the only thing I said, not knowing. I, you know, fast forward five, six years, I would move to Florida. Then I would actually meet him. But I was just thinking like, all right, he's 16, 16 year olds. They're not thinking about no real money. They just go ahead, save your money, kid. You'll be all right. And that's that was the first time I actually talked to Alex. I was actually in Afghanistan. I was about to go out on a mission, actually, when uh, I, that was the first time I met you when I talked to, you know, our mutual friend. And then uh, and then fast forward, I run into Alex again years later. I'm still thinking like, all right. He says he want it, but he really don't want it. I mean, because I'm thinking of all the, you know, 18, 19, 21 year olds, they thinking about partying, clubbing, right. doing drugs and all the other stuff. I mean, that's that's what I was doing when I was at age. So I was like, no, <laughs> you know, he got he to gotta be doing that, right? And then uh, so so we met up and then so he started telling me what he's doing. And I told him, I said, Alex, if you don't reach a millionaire by the time you're 30, I think you're, on, I think you're a crackhead or something because his mindset, his mindset was where people's mindset usually get to when they in forties or fifties. He had at a young age. I wish I didn't start till I was 28 and he had that mindset. And I was like, he can, he can do a lot of great things because people are not thinking of, of it. You know, I, you know, we always talked about the peer pressure. He gonna have friends, nobody's right. doing it. So it's going to push him, but having that mental fortitude to push on, not fall to feel, peer pressure is amazing, especially at his age. If you don't mind me asking, how did he get that mindset? Was it somebody in your family? Like what me? made you? Yeah. No, it wasn't anybody in my family. Um, 
the way I got the mindset was, and it's always funny because like people, I, I get that question a lot. Literally the, the reason why I had that mindset is, so when I was 16, I started buying and reselling like military antiques. And then it taught me like, oh, I can make money rather than having a job. And so I liked that kind of freedom because I could literally just go to a show, grab inventory, sell online, and I'd have money and I could go do whatever I wanted. Mm. And so when I, I wasn't making a ton of money, but it was like, it was, I was making like around 2000 a month at like 16 years old wow. from just selling antiques. And then when I turned 18, because I was still living with my mom, she was like, you need a job or you need to go, you know, or you're going to start paying rent or whatever. And so I was like, no, I don't want a job. So because I didn't want to because I knew if I go to a job, I got to be there eight hours a day. Right. And I didn't want that. Like, I hated the idea of being tied down to a company. And so when I was 18, I was like, I got to get out of this. Like, I'm already like I'm acting like I was already 50 years old into the into the rat race. <laughs> and I like just turned 18 and I'm like, I don't want to be stuck in this. So um, that's when I started like talking to different people that I could find that knew that like were doing things differently. Like in my family, there weren't many people that like really retired, like that truthfully had a good 401k or they had any investments to sustain themselves. It was just like people living on social security and I saw how poor they were in retirement. And I just wanted like my life. I just wanted to be able to do whatever I wanted. And so I was just trying to figure out that way of what can I do to not be dependent on a job. But now, as Kirby showed me, like it's not, you know, it's not the idea of like invest until you don't have to work, but invest to where if you want to work, it's a it's a decision rather than an obligation. So you have that freedom to do so to go to a job if you want. Like I, I know I, I personally don't have to work right now. Exactly. But yeah. me either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <good job. laughs> no, I, I don't, but I really, I really like what I do. So right. Yeah, I, exactly. You know, he tells me all the time, you know, you don't have to work anymore. What am I going to do here at home? So I'm like, no, I'm going to work. I like what I do. I, I feel like, um, for me, the goal is to help other people, um, the contractors that are coming in when they're getting started and they're not sure what they're doing. Well, I didn't know what I was doing for years. And I remember pulling my hair and crying because I didn't have help. I didn't know how to do my LLC. I didn't know how to do any of that. And so my goal now is to help other people that are coming in um, be able to do that. You know, when I hire the second drivers for contractors at SIDS, my mindset is I know what it's like for a truck to be sitting there and not have somebody driving it. So I try to get a driver in as quick as I can for those um, those other gentlemen that have uh, contracts. My last question for you guys. And uh, so I always tease Kirby on this. I always say he's bougie because he he has his own <laughs> spending limit per month. I don't even have that yet. So um, I know you guys, you guys like to go on your vacations and stuff, but how long was it? And really, because I want people to just see that it's not just like, oh, you get your first truck, you're making millions. You get your first property, you're making millions. Like, how long was it before or how many trucks did you have before you could actually like start to enjoy those leisure activities? Truthfully enjoy them like, oh, it wasn't a financial burden to go go ahead and do those things. How many trucks do we have when we four. started actually? Three, four trucks. Yeah, I think I, I want I I think I'm not in agreement with Carlos because I'm the one that does finance. <laughs> 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 I want to say honestly, honestly, because we were buying the trucks but still paying off debt, meaning our home. Um, what we didn't tell you is our house is paid for now. So okay. congratulations. Awesome. When we paid this, thank you very much. When we paid this house, um Holy jumping. I, I think so that's happy. when for me when I felt that leisure of and we were probably okay. seven trucks in. Okay. And I know that before that it was there, but because my goal was to pay this house and be debt free, 
And every penny that I got, I was able to take and like save and save and save. And I think it was actually at the seventh truck. We paid off okay. our house. We actually have a picture in Facebook where we're in front of Wells Fargo. And I took a picture of him. He's jumping. He's in the air. And I didn't <laughs> post anything. I just posted that picture. And everybody was contacting me. They're like, you bought a Wells Fargo? <laughs> I'm like, no, no. Until this day, I didn't tell anybody what happened. Like, sometimes you feel negativity from people. Um, you know, they don't want to see you make it. They don't want to see you happy. Um, we felt that along, along the way. So I stopped telling people what we were doing and just doing it. Um, but I think for me, even though it was, it, it probably was financially earlier, it was probably like he said, maybe at that fifth or sixth truck, um, because every truck we bought, we didn't buy it unless we could buy it cash. That's the other thing. Okay. We did Amazing. not go to the next level if it wasn't cash, because why get back into debt to try and make it again? So, um, and the other thing I'll tell people is you definitely have to lose money to make money. Yeah. You know, that's my motto. I'm always telling him that when we're doing things with the drivers, he's like, why are we going to do that? And I said, cause you gotta, you gotta lose money to make money, you know, and it has worked out for us.